Half of all Canadians will either need blood or know someone who will need blood at some point in their lives. Yet, Canada, like many similar countries, suffers from a crisis in available blood for transfusions. That's why we should all pay attention to a trial the British National Health Service has just announced, and it will begin in 2017. Patients who volunteer will be given a synthetic blood product made from stem cells. So could this lead to a revolution in health care? Our CBC medical columnist, Dr. Peter Lin, joins us with his take on this. Dr. Lin, this really does sound like something out of a science fiction book or a movie. How real is it, and do we need such a thing as synthetic blood? I know that sounds terrible, but it sounds kind of cool at the same time. I remember in medical school, we were always dreaming about some different way of giving people blood products because we would run out every so often at the mm -hmm. hospitals with all these car accidents and things like that. And so the thought of having something synthetic has always been around. Actually, if you go back to the 1600s, they tried to replace blood with beer. Now that, that didn't work very well. Wow. <laughs> and then about 300 years later we finally figured out that there's blood types and things like that and we just can't mix bloods together. And so now what they're thinking about is what about taking stem cells that can act as little factories. Mm -hmm. So they'll just start producing you know type A blood or type B blood or O blood or whatever you need and that way we have a constant supply instead of waiting for people to donate which is fantastic but that's a hit and miss along the way. Mm -hmm. And that's really what they're thinking about is having this synthetic blood. They're pushing it off till 2017 when this study is going to start and the thought is they will give about 20 people um, sort of this uh, man-made red blood cells I guess if you will and then see how that works and then eventually they're going to use it for the rarest of the blood types you know where we can't match their blood up pretty well at what the traditional way so then they're hoping to make them some blood along the way. If this works, would it be revolutionary? Yeah, you could imagine we could have little factories kind of, you know, producing these things so then we would never run out of the stuff. It would be very clean because we can sterilize everything and we don't have to wait for donations to come in. And in certain countries where, let's say, HIV is very rampant, you can't actually rely on donations. And so therefore, this would be a huge boon in terms of how we can manage the blood crisis. Uh when could we see it potentially here in Canada? Yeah, it's interesting. So we have lots of things moving around. The Army is even interested in this because they want to figure out how they can get blood products and things like that. Health Canada, of course, will have to make sure it's safe for us and look it over. But you know what the biggest problem is? Is manufacturing this stuff. Right. So it turns out two drops of blood has one billion red blood cells in it. Two drops. Yeah. Now, if I were to make one blood cell every second, it would take me 31 years to make one billion. So that's a bit of a problem. So that's why the government has given people, you know, you got two years, everybody work on this hard. Yeah. And some of them have figured out how to make large volumes of these things. And you could see this, first of all, start off in very, very small trials to make sure it's safe. And then what you're going to see is slowly it's going to go from the rarest cases of patients. And I think this will cover everybody eventually. So therefore, until that happens, though, you got to keep donating. OK, yeah. so right now it's going to be a while. So continue to donate and continue to donate regularly because blood only lasts for about 42 days. It has a shelf life. Mm -hmm. So if you can give, then I think that's the best thing for now. It really is so important. And of course, this is in the infancy stage. And as you said, not until 2017 for the trials. That's even. just the beginning trial. Exactly. Okay, so that's the baby step. So barely off the ground, but still very interesting. Thanks so much, Dr. Lin. Thanks, Ashley. CBC medical columnist, Dr. Peter Lin.